because I was born in this vicinity, uh, right around the Grand Club. And uh, that was back in 1896, October 25th. I, of course, went to district school until the seventh grade. And from that time on, I became an Akronite in the old Akron High School on the corner where the uh, well, the, the town hall, town hall mm -hmm. is now, yeah. And during that period, I of course attended Sunday school and and Presbyterian church, which existed at that time, right at next next to the Baptist church now. And one Sunday during the session of Sunday school. Mr. Anderson, which is Arthur Anderson's father, was assistant superintendent of the school, Sunday school. So uh, he approached me during the class one day, and, or one Sunday, and I wanted to know if I was interested in banking. I said, well, I hadn't even thought of it, but what was the reason for the approach? And he said they needed some help for the summer down at the bank. And if I was interested, uh, I should uh, go down to the bank and approach Mr. Ford, who then was the chief he was a kind of a, sort of a grouchy old fellow, and I approached him and said I was recommended. He said, well, what do you know? I said, I don't know anything about banking or bookkeeping or anything along that line. He said, well, that don't make, pertain to my thoughts, because I don't care whether you did or not, because whatever you uh, uh, learn here will be my own wishes. So I jumped at the chance of taking a job and at six dollars a week. I started in summer work. I did many a work. Cleaning the spittoon, I always get a kick out of that. And that was those were the days when they had spittoons. How many and would they have in the bank? More than one? Uh oh hell. Help is no. How many spittoons? Oh, one. Just one. Yeah. Did a lot of people chew tobacco? Oh yes, that was quite prevalent. So that was one of my jobs, and stoking the furnace with coal, keeping it up, and uh, well, cleaning the cleaning the floor and so forth. So you really started at the very bottom, didn't you? I certainly did. <laughs> After that, well, I continued on and on, and I tried to get an increase in salary from that six dollars a week. That is true, I forgot. Anyway, Three of us boys, which 
I met up with one was Joe Richards. That was because you didn't, you never knew him. And John McGrillis. The three of us all joined up, went down to Rochester and in an interview with a higher ups down there and was came home and was deciding on whether we should go or not. Was that to the university? Yes. Yes. Uh, Joe Richards finally let's see I believe he went to Rochester for a while and John McGrillis did also and of course they're both gone now but I stayed in the bank clinging to my six dollars a week. It wasn't too long before I asked for an increase. And they said they just couldn't do it. They couldn't afford it. That was Frank Stage. He was the, well, he was a county officer and lived in Akron. You, you never came in contact with... No, I didn't know him. So, uh, I finally got it up to $10. And I had a little vacation besides. Then I was called into the Army for a short period, three months. And uh, came back to the bank again. Where was this bank located at that time? Right down the street from where it is now. So the white front, white front of building, white fronted building. Mm -hmm. It's there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At that time, we were ruled under the national laws and were known as the Wickware National Bank. And then in 1920, I think it was, that we changed over to the Bank of Akron, which was a private, not a private institution, but uh, independent? Independent. Yes. Ah, uh, what else? Now, who was who was the president of the bank then? Uh, Heidi Eckerson. Mr. Oh, yeah, Mr. Edward Ford, the gentleman who hired me at the time, was cashier of the bank. And, of course, he really run it because he worked in the bank uh, all the time. And when business was slow, he would uh, round up the, <laughs> the fellow next door who was a bartender in the what, is it, what kind of a shop? A tavern or a saloon? A tavern. And in the slow afternoons, they would open the back door and go out and take the table out there and have card games while I did the work inside. Why, the Akron Bank wouldn't have time for that today, would they? <laughs> yeah, it's really comfortable to think of all those things. Yeah. Okay. I forgot the way it is. In 19... When? 
1915 I graduated. Uh, it was 15 of us in the class in the year 1915. And it was always kept in my mind because it was so easy. We were very proud of the fact that was the highest, that was the most that ever graduated at one time. And that was, as I say, 1915. Uh, Arthur, you mentioned being in World War One for a little while. Where were you stationed? Camp up in Long Island. And I used to go back and forth uh, by train overnight. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, my wife was in Saranac Lake at that time. Or I, uh, with a heart murmur, they considered me um, very limited, and I was scared to pieces, thought I was going to die the next day. <laughs> but you didn't, fortunately, huh? <laughs> I did. Right. And that, so you were... Um... And so I was assigned to a local board up at Carmel, New York, which is about 50 miles outside of New York, and I was boarded by the government at a, a home... Uh, in which there was teachers from the school and oh, it must have been eight or ten boarded at the same spot. And we used to have some awfully good times. Mm -hmm. I have pictures now of uh, moving around on uh, Sunday afternoon and, and no cars, of course. Buggies, and I huh? was there for, well, I was there about a month, I would say, more than that. Now, coming back to your family, your, um, the Berg family, have they uh, been in our area a long time? All their lives. All their lives. Now, all they of... They lived in their... How many generations? Your grandfather, Three. your grandfather came to Akron. No, my grandfather. Oh, wait a minute, grandfather? You mean Strickland? The um, your grand, your mother was a Strickland, and the Stricklands were an old family in our area, right? That's right. And where did they live? house. In comparison to this, it would be right next door. That's the... uh, that, was on, uh, that was on Route 5, or Main Street, was it? The Strickland yeah. property. Yeah. Near Grant Club? Right near the Grant Club. Yes. And, and they used to have communication. Uh, very unique. Uh, from one house to the other. In other words, the daughter would call grandma, or the daughter would call across the road with a little telephone that they used to tap on. They told that many times. It was a, well... Was it a tin can with a string? Yeah. yeah. Of the string, mm -hmm. and they used to get communications back, <laughs> back and forth, to that extent. Uh, now, who was it that was across the road? Who were they communicating? It was whoever lived over there. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Two girls having fun. Yeah. Across the road. Yeah. I can't. I can't tell you who. Now you mentioned that your father worked for Denial. Dexter Denial. Yes. He must have had a lot of property, did he, Mr. Denial? 
I'm just the farm that was turned over to the, or was sold for the uh, library. Right in Akron. The farm was right in Akron, was it? Yeah, well, it was right, right here across the road. Across the road from where your house is? Yeah, circling. Yes. I can remember Mrs. Denial of being um, in those days, she belonged to the elite class. She would uh, love flowers, and she uh, be working around uh, the front yard with gloves on and taking care of the little flowers and. We, we, the neighbors always laughed because she was far from a farm or farmer way. She, she loved flowers and things like that. Say that. This is starting a new subject. I was quite interested in politics and uh, used to work on the uh, election board always, every year. For several years, and finally, uh, I ran for the office of uh, um, justice. Sorry. Wait a minute. Justice of the mm -hmm. and uh, served around fourteen years on that. Board, which was the, really the town board in those days. And now your son is following in your footsteps That's on the right. town board. That's right. And he's he served good many years too. I don't know how many. Do you know? Well, finally lost out. I'm being reelected by 12 votes. Hmm. And I was I was too confident at the time of running as I was working at the bank and always had in mind that there would be nothing to it. Everybody knew man. They should naturally uh, they just naturally vote for you, wouldn't they? Yes. And you just didn't bother to get out and work That's on right. your election. Yes. That's right. So somebody, Eager Beaver, got in there and uh -huh. took some votes away from you, right? John Kegabine. John Kegabine. Of course, don't mention that. <laughs> now, you, you started out at $6 a week doing the chores around the bank. Now, tell us something of what has happened since then with your banking career. I tried to, um, very hard to get an increase, and I had to approach this Frank Stage that I mentioned before. And he was the one who said it just passed, couldn't possibly pay anymore. But finally they did come up. Got up to twenty-five dollars a week, and I thought I was rich. And uh, it remained at twenty-five dollars a week. I think that was about the amount that I got when you were sick, wasn't it, Ruth? I was uh, advanced to the office of cashier and vice president, and from there I was, uh, I remained in that position for quite some time and finally elevated to 
advance to Was that after that? Chairman of the board. Chairman of the board, yes. Right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, lady, roll up door. I'm <clears throat> not seeing that on the Gum Falls for charity.
<laughs> and John, who, uh, we've been selling these for a few years, and last summer when we were selling them in the park, some woman bought one and, and uh, we got the, the slip that went with it, went away, pretty soon she came back. She said, what am I to believe? <laughs> and John was fabric, fabric back. Yeah, yeah. He hadn't seen that before. Realized. <laughs> so he said, let's decide on a date and stick to it. <laughs> and uh, all three of us decided 49 is when they get out. Is that okay with you there? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Now, the school. Uh, what do we say about this? Uh, now, the school, we Akron's comprehensive public school.
He didn't get that panoramic that he probably had that the, the other yeah. Royce. He has some pictures. He has some pictures, the original. But for some reason, maybe. Oh, well, I don't think I'll sign them. Sure. Oh, I, I know we did. I, I know. Well, yeah, but not the sign. There's some, there are some in there. Because, you know, all the uh, refreshment stand is in there. Remember seeing that? Well, it wouldn't be there. That was, well, I guess, no, not there. So, <laughs> well, I like the brook. Well, that's the brook. Well, you know, he's done a pretty good job. And in spite of, if, if he did leave one or two, they all could be playing the, uh, yeah. We got more of a bargain for it, originally. <laughs> now, how are we going to do this? We've got uh, we got three players in the town hall. We've got the opposite. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's see. Well, I
I really went over that darn uh, outline several times, and uh, it doesn't bother me. I couldn't get 16 pages out of Wanted, they wanted me to say systems, fabrication, 